कृष्ण कृष्ण हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे Chapter Twenty Three, Devahuti's Lamentation. When he informs the Devahuti that, according to the, their agreement, now he wishes to accept sannyas. She asks him first to bestow on her. fearlessness pause ah what a benediction to us what a blessing to us less intelligent women would ask something mundane but this is very intelligent no huh? like say it can give you any benediction why would you ask an ordinary woman will just ask for wealth and children and but wow fearlessness that's that's actually a good benediction to ask for because most of our maya most of our weakness most of our inability to progress in spiritual life is because we are afraid we're afraid of so many things so being inspired by character and the nature of devahuti we can pray to the lord to sri to sri purushottam jagannatha purushottam krishna to avoid us with fearlessness fearlessness so that we can take full shelter of krishna without any fear in progress in our spiritual life matreya said after devahuti's parents left The chaste lady always tried to understand her husband's desires. She waited upon him constantly with great love. As Bhava as Bhavani, Lord Shiva's wife, serves him. She served her husband with intimacy, respect, controlled senses, and sweet words. She shunned lust. pride envy greed vanity and sinful activities by her diligent service she pleased her powerful husband let's pause there these are qualities that every woman should make a note and make efforts intimacy respect controlled senses and sweet words controlled senses says it all <laughs> because we cannot be nice and sweet and forgiving and without controlled senses right and then yeah some things what we need to do are these be respectful be controlled be sweet using sweet words and do not do is lust and pride and envy and greed and vanity and sinful activities which is most of the time very very prevalent in the women class sometimes um, we dress up not for the men around we actually dress up for other women the other women are the ones who notice more other women are the one who compare more and they kind of live in their own world women oh they are very <laughs> all these things right they want more and they can show off pride but can be a lot of envy and vanity so there is a tendency for us to easily become susceptible to these things because we are more emotional in nature if we are not associating with devotees and using our nature to be submissive or the nature to be, be easy, easily influenced if we are not using that to become influenced by krishna consciousness by shrimad bhagavatam by chanting of the holy name then whatever is left will get influenced by that so becoming devotees is not something about 
by wearing kanti mala and tilak and wearing a sari and covering the head it doesn't make us automatically devotees of focused uninterrupted pure it requires effort it requires introspection it requires awareness Of course, <laughs> in this case, it's Karadama, okay? It's not just some Tom, Dick, and Harry. It's not just some random guy. She, she's serving a very qualified man. He's a powerful man, powerful sage. She was fully devoted to him because she saw him as greater than even providence. She was confident he could bestow great blessings on her. Gradually, she grew weak and emaciated due to her rigid vow of service to her husband. When the foremost of celestial sages, Kardama, saw her condition, he was overcome with compassion and spoke to her in a voice choked with love. Listen now. To what transpired. Roz, would you like to continue reading? Okay. As the sun rose above the horizon, Kardama came out of his meditative trance. The wind blew gently through the verdant forest clearing. Next to his small hut, he was constructed another similar dwelling for Devahuti. He saw her returning from the river, bearing a water jug on her head. Tears pricked his eyes. The princess had enjoyed a privileged upbringing with every opulence and comfort. However, throughout the many years of their marriage, she had embraced severe hardships, ceaselessly striving to please him. Although he rose well before the sunrise, she woke before him, and at night she rested after him. He ate frugally once a day, and she observed the same austerity, accepting only his remnants. As he placed the jug on the ground, Kadama noted how thin and tired she looked. Her face was drawn, and her hair dishelped. Kadama gently took her hand and sat her next to him. Respectful daughter of Swambhavanu, I am delighted by your great devotion and excellent loving service. Since everyone cherishes their body, I am astonished that you have neglected yours to serve me. By my practice of austerity, meditation, and Krishna consciousness, I have achieved Krishna's blessings which destroy fear and lamentation. Although you have not performed such practices by your selfless service to me, you have rightfully earned their results. Just behold these wonderful gifts. I give you the vision to see them. In her mind, Devahuti could see how by Kadama's grace, she would attain happiness greater than the Okay, let's pause there. What does this mean? Although you have not performed such practices, by your selfless service to me, you have rightfully earned their results. What she has not practiced? Oh, okay. I was thinking she did perform austerity, but I guess he means to say the austerities that he performed and meditation and Krishna consciousness which destroyed fear and lamentation. That's interesting. When we take shelter of the holy name, we don't need any other benediction from anybody else. And we have our Lord, we don't need benediction from anybody else. And we get fear and lamentation gets destroyed by practicing Krishna consciousness. It's beautiful. Okay, please continue. In her mind, <clears throat> Deva Bhuti, uh, from where I have to start? 
my dear has no uh, god's freedom from suffering and ultimately pure love of god placing her delicate hands over her heart she beamed in gratitude kadama continued what is the use of any achievement other than krishna's mercy all material gains are vanquished simply by the movement of his eyebrows by your devotion to your husband you have achieved boons rarely obtained by persons proud of aristocracy and material possessions devahuti glanced bashfully at her powerful husband since he had mastered the spiritual sciences she was confident his blessings would never fail my dear husband best of brahmins i know that because you are protected by krishna's spiritual energy you have achieved and are the master of infallible mystic paths she looked down hesitating for a moment however you once made a promise that your our bodily union should now fulfill since bearing children is a great quality for a chaste woman with a glorious husband my lord i am stuck by excited emotion for you kindly make the necessary arrangements according to scripture let my emaciated body withered by unsatisfied passion be rendered fit for you please provide a suitable house for this purpose they were how they knew the kam shastras instruct how good children should be conceived they described the type of dwelling and decor best suited for sexual intercourse as well as how the wife should dress and decorate herself the perfume she should use and how she should make herself attractive this creates a favorable mental situation conducive to good progeny kadamma understood her mind he exercised his yogic power instantly producing a nerial mention that would travel at his will it was bedecked with jewels adorned with pillars of precious stones and capable of yielding whatever one desired it was equipped with opulent furnishing and decor which became more exquisite in the course of time taking devahuti by the hand kadama gave her a tour of celestial mansion it was fully equipped with everything her heart might desire the sage pointed out its different features which made it pleasant in all seasons devahuti admired the colorful flags festoons the numerous sculptures and paintings there were also tapestries of linen silk and other fabrics she appreciated the wreaths of charming flowers that attracted pleasantly humming bees the palace looked charming with beds couches fans and seats arranged in seven stories its beauty was enhanced by decorative engravings on the walls emerald floors and coral daisies they who were they marveled at the splendid mansion with its gleaming crystal thresholds and doors bedecked with diamonds gold pinnacles crowned its sapphire domes choice rubies set in gleaming walls and resembled eyes it was furnished with astonishing canopies and golden gates here and there in the palace were flocks of swans and doves as well as imitations so life like that the real birds rose above them again and again thinking them alive the palace vibrated with their calls the princess saw pleasure grounds resting chambers bedrooms with inner and outer courtyards all luxuriously designed even kadama was astonished by his creation as they finished their tour kadama noticed devahuti's head was hanging down he understood that she felt out of place in such elegant surroundings the sage said my dear lotus side wife do not be anxious 
bathe in like Bindu Sarovra, stated by Lord Vishnu himself, which can grant all desires. After that, you may join me in this aerial palace. Devahuti hurried to the lake. As she stood on his shore, she was shocked by her reflection in its calm water. Her dress was soiled, her long hair matted, and her skin coated with thick layer of dirt. She entered the lake where it joined with the Saraswati River. In a house within the lake, she saw 1,000 girls, all in the prime of youth and fragrant like lotuses. When she saw her, the dancers rose with folded hands. We are your maidservants. How may we serve you? The girls respectfully bade Devahuti with valuable oils and ointments and dressed her fine new cloth. They decorated her with brilliant, valuable jewels. Then they offered her first-class food and a sweet, inebriating drink. When she was seated, the maidservants respectfully brought her a mirror. To her delight, she had regained her former beauty, radiant and adorned with a garland. She was dressed in immaculate robes and decorated with auspicious tillage. Okay, let's pause there. So she had her beauty treatment. <laughs> so <laughs> deep tan and removing the dirt and cleansing and facials. And I mean, it doesn't describe as like that exactly. Yeah. But with, they say valuable oils and ointments, so all kinds of things, right? Because a princess life must have been like that. Like servants would always massage her feet and massage her body and um, put all kinds of oils and creams and turmeric and some kind of waxing process must have taken place. All that. It's not easy for a woman to keep herself looking beautiful. There's so much we need to do, right? For women, it's like so much. The oil our hair and put something for the face and then the, the hands and the legs and they have so much to take care of. So yeah, all these ladies coming there as maid servants serving her just so that she can regain back her beauty yeah. that she naturally was, but it shows that how she forgot that bodily care and she just engaged herself in service. So this shows when we engage ourselves in Krishna's service, uh, we, nothing is lost. Nothing is lost. Never. When we forget everything when we are serving. Exactly. Lord. exactly. And then, but Krishna gives back everything and much, much more. But if we engage in material activities, it's not like that. What we will gain? Nothing. What's the point of a beautiful, healthy body if we don't engage it in devotional service? There has to be a balance. We need to take care of the body. So in, in reminding ourselves that this is for service, not that uh, this is for my enjoyment. Because if we take care of the body thinking this is for our enjoyment, we'll be disappointed. And it's, it's a very bad, uh, passionate thinking. But if we think this is for Krishna's service, then we have dovetailed our material body in service of the Lord. Okay, we can read a little bit more about the fabulous arrangements. I will I will read this last our last part. A fabulous pearl necklace with a jewel locket hung round her neck. She wore bangles on her wrists and tinkling gold anklets. On her hips was a golden girdle set with numerous jewels. She smiled broadly, admiring her fine white teeth in the mirror. Her dark eyebrows were like two bowls, and her eyes with their most corners seemed like lotus buds. Curling tresses framed her face. 
when she affectionately affectionately thought of her great husband to her amazement she along with her thousand maid servants at once appeared before him astonished she marveled at his yogic power kardama was struck with love for his wife who was now as beautiful as when he first met her her fine silken robes accentuated her charming feet figure taking her arm in his own kardama escorted her onto the aerial mansion followed by her maid servants we can pause here for today like you know like the series like a suspense of how it's going to continue <laughs> tomorrow like that they are not just jumping into honeymoon phase right they waited and they kept continuing their service and she proved her dedication and loyalty and he proved his sense control they say um for a man sense control is most important and for a woman satisfaction is very important and we can see that in in their example that he didn't lose his sense control and immediately like you remember he attracted to her in the beginning when he saw her you know when he took her as his wife but he didn't jump into sense gratification so that shows his sense control and then she didn't complain hey i come from a princess background you know you better treat me nicely you know you shouldn't neglect me you should you know she didn't she just remained satisfied in her duty and she kept performing her service very dedicatedly served him yes. yeah a lot of faith right a lot of faith we cannot serve in that kind of mood unless we have faith in the person if the guy is a rascal we can't serve the person like that i mean maybe under illusion some women think that this guy will be fixed as yes, i will change him he's a rascal but i'll make him a nice guy and sometimes women do kind of fall for the wrong uh, men who don't treat them nicely um who take advantage of them women sometimes do become weak and desperate and take shelter of men who are unqualified but then if they if the man is not qualified serving him with with surrender will make us more and more uh, resentful but is the opposite with a qualified person as we can see devahuti could continue serving until her, her hair became matted and her skin became thick layer of dirt and all she kept doing because it gave her strength when we do dharma when we do dharma in the right way it gives us strength when we run away from dharma it makes us weak so devahuti got strength to continue because she was performing dharma and towards a man who is qualified in today's world a lot of people will compare and say hey be like devahuti you know be like sita devi but they don't want to be like lord ram or kardama they want to be like ravana but then they want you to be like sita right <laughs> so but emphasized it's very difficult to find a qualified man but once we do find a qualified man a qualified woman will naturally gain strength to serve him it's it kind of goes hand in hand you know serving the right man gives us strength and serving the wrong man in the wrong way can make us weak and make us resentful and you know, toxic relationships as they call it sometimes um, it's like that so there has to be a good balance sometimes the woman needs to be clever my grandmother always says be look like you're very surrendered and you're doing everything like as if he's your god but internally you know come on he's just a bag of bones he has his own weaknesses he has his own flaws so you don't completely give your heart you perform your duty but then in your heart you only think of krishna as the actual shelter that's a clever uh, woman 
not somebody who depends on a man who is filled with flaws. So the service attitude should be there, but the dependency should not be there. That's the hard part. Because nowadays it's easy to just say, no, I don't need a man and I'll be independent. That's easy, but to, to have a man and to make him pleased in by your actions, but not giving your heart and not depending that this this man will be there for us. That's the difficulty to, to cut from self-will uh, and to cut from illusion and ego that this man will give me everything. Yeah, that's, an, that's an illusion. So there has to be a balance to, to understand the um, limitations of the, uh, the man of this world and to take shelter of Krishna. Mm -hmm. We will continue tomorrow. Thank you very much for joining me. Thank you. Shaman Bhagavatam ki jai. Shila Prabhu Adi ki jai. Gaurabhaktavandi ki jai. Thank you.